In this video, we will discuss the calculation of Fermi level EF in a non-degenerate, dopants totally ionized semiconductor material. The intrinsic Fermi level EI is located somewhere near the middle of the band gap, but we need to know the precise positioning of EI. We also have learned the formulas for carrier concentrations N and P for non-degenerate semiconductors, and the value or position of Fermi level EF determines whether a doped semiconductor is non-degenerate or degenerate. Actually, the formulas for carrier concentrations N and P provide a one-to-one -one correspondence between the Fermi level EF and the carrier concentrations N and P. So by having any one of the three variables, N, P, or EF, we can determine the remaining two variables under equilibrium conditions. On this slide, we will determine the exact positioning of intrinsic Fermi level EI. In the intrinsic semiconductor material, N equals P. We can also use the non-degenerate formulas for N and P as shown, where NC is effective density of conduction band states, and NV is effective density of valence band states. Another fact is that EF equals EI in the intrinsic semiconductor. So by substituting for N and P and setting EF equals EI, we then get the second equation, NC times E to the power of EI minus EC over KT equals NV times E to the power of EV minus EI over KT. Then we can solve the equation for EI and get the result, EI equals EC plus EV divided by 2 plus KT divided by 2 times ln NV over NC. The ratio between NV and NC can be expressed as a relationship of the electron effective mass Mn asterisk and the whole effective mass Mp asterisk. Then we get the final result of EI as EC plus EV over 2 plus 3 quarters times KT times ln Mp asterisk over Mn asterisk. So EI lies precisely at middle gap only if Mp asterisk equals Mn asterisk or the temperature T is absolutely zero. For silicon at room temperature, Mp asterisk over Mn asterisk equals 0.69 and 3 quarters times Kt times ln Mp asterisk over Mn asterisk is negative 0.0073 electron volt and the EI lies 0.0073 electron volt below mid gap. This small deviation from mid gap is typically neglected in drawing energy band diagrams etc. Now let's discuss the calculation of Fermi level EF in doped semiconductors. The general assumption is that donor and acceptor doped semiconductors to be non-degenerate in equilibrium condition and maintained at temperatures where the dopants are fully ionized. Under these conditions, we can use the following carrier concentration formula. N equals Ni times E to the power of EF minus EI over KT. P equals Ni times E to the power of EI minus EF over KT. We can then solve EF minus EI in terms of N, P, and NI. Depending on the particular problem, the appropriate carrier concentration formulas for N and P is then used to determine EF. In typical donor doped semiconductors, ND is far greater than NA, ND is also far greater than NI. Thus we get EF minus EI equals KT times ln ND over NI. ND is the total number of donor atoms or size per cubic centimeter. NA is the total number of acceptor atoms or size per cubic centimeter. NI is intrinsic carrier concentration. In typical acceptor doped semiconductors, NA is far greater than ND. NA is also far greater than NI. Thus we get EI minus EF equals KT times ln NA over NI. From the previous calculation for Fermi level EF in doped semiconductors, we can see that the Fermi level moves systematically upward in energy from EI with increasing donor doping. It also shows that the Fermi level moves systematically downward in energy from EI with increasing acceptor doping. This figure shows exact Fermi level EF positioning versus donor and acceptor doping in silicon at room temperature. For a given semiconductor material and ambient temperature, there exist maximum non-degenerate doping concentrations, about which the material becomes degenerate. Thank you for watching this video. Please go ahead to the next video in the playlist.